I am so excited to introduce to you our newest pattern. It's a slipper pattern for adults. So not just women, men can wear these too. I made these for my husband. Yeah, they're really classic and simple and that's what I love. If you know me, you know I love a good slipper. I wear them all year round and I just think they're so cozy and what's better than being able to customize it and make it your own. So today I'm gonna show you how to make the slipper pattern. I'll link the pattern below with everything that you need and today I'll walk you through the how-to and some tips, how to find fabric and all of that stuff. So let's get into how to make these really cozy slippers. First, you want to find the perfect fabric for your slippers, and I think that the fabric choice really just makes these different. So take into consideration a few things. For the sole, you want something that is sturdy and something that is comfortable too. So I chose leather. I've also made these with felt, and I think that that's a great option because you can glue a few felt layers together and really make like this thick sole. You can use a faux leather, you can use cotton fabric and layer that on top of felt, give it a sturdy feel. You can also use grip fabric and this is kind of made for baby onesies kind of. So this is also accompanying a baby slipper pattern if you're looking for that, I'll link it here. But there's so many different options for fabrics. So once you found the fabric for the sole, you want to find fabric for the lining the inside, the whole patch, and for the top of the slipper. So these can all be the same fabric. You don't have to change it up. For these, I did all the same except the outer sole and the heel patch are leather. And everything else is made out of this like knit cotton that's kind of quilted that is from Joanne Fabrics. So I put an interfacing right here on the slipper and that just kind of gave it a little bit of structure. You can tell, and that kind of gave it a little bit of structure. You can tell it didn't do much, but it does make a little bit of a difference. So if you have interfacing or you can find it easily, I would recommend interfacing the top slipper. So you only have to cut two extra pieces for the interfacing and iron it on before you start sewing. Before you cut out any of your pattern pieces, you wanna make sure you just get to know the pattern a little bit and make sure you're cutting out the right pieces with the right fabric if you're doing separate fabrics. So I've made these with Sherpa, linen, cotton, quilt would be nice. Um, and I wanna do that soon. I found some quilted tops at a thrift store for just a couple dollars and I think that that would be just a nostalgic feel. I also have a little collaboration with my friend Sally that you can find on Instagram soon. We're gonna do like a punch needle and slipper. So I think you can really just fine tune this to your favorite fabrics, what you like to work with. Um, think outside the box, there's so many options. So now that you've cut out all of your pieces, just make sure you have the correct number for each pattern piece. So make sure you grab all of your materials and we'll meet back here with the pattern. Throughout this process, we're going to make a right shoe and a left shoe. So make sure as you are laying out your pieces, you're doing that according to which shoe this is. You don't wanna end up with two lefts and two rights. So just make sure you're taking that into consideration. Unpin your front pieces and you're gonna take two of the pieces and match them together. Right sides together, at a quarter of an inch, stitch the two pieces together along the inside curve of this crescent moon shape. Press the seam towards one side and add an eighth of an inch from the seam line, stitch your seam allowance down towards the inside of the slipper. Hold your stitched piece long sides together and press along the finished seam to create a clean edge. 
There's two outer notches and you're gonna use these as a guide to go from notch to notch to create a couple rows of gather stitches. Unpin your fabric soles. You'll have two soles in front of you, so lay them right sides facing up, remembering that you have a left shoe and a right shoe. Pin the top of your slipper and the sole of your slipper together at the center toe notch. Now you can use your gather stitches and pull the slipper to fit the bottom sole and pull the gathers towards the toe of the slipper. Sew together at one inch around the entire slipper. Lay your piece in front of you, right sides facing up, and unpin your heel patch. Sew this around at a fourth of an inch. You can hand sew this, you can get creative and use a different type of heel patch, but whatever you do, just sew it at this point. Grab your felt soles. Using fabric glue, make a line of glue from about 3 8 of an inch from the edge. Fill in the rest of the sole and match it up to your slipper shape. Press together. Using a needle and thread, make a loop stitch along the very edge of the fabric and the sole. This is going to join them together and really give your slipper shape. Then you're gonna grab your remaining soles and glue them on top of your finished slipper. And this is going to sandwich the slipper top and the sole together. You can finish this off by hand stitching around the entire sole. You can do it with a machine or you can just leave it glued, making sure you're using a sturdy glue, pinning it into place or using like binder clips to make sure that it's gluing very close to the fabric. Let your slippers dry overnight and then you can wear them and be so cozy for this winter coming up. I can't wait to see what you make, what fabrics you choose for your slippers. You can tag me on Instagram when you made them. Ask me any questions below. I'd love to walk through this with you. The pattern is linked below along with the baby slipper pattern and so you can go watch that video next. I'll see you next time with a new tutorial.